Hi, my name is Olusha Gonzalez. I'm a partner and lead of PW Strategy and in West Africa. My name is Exterior Agui. I'm a partner with PricewaterhouseCoopers and also lead the trade desk across Africa. Now, because this is a trade conference and a trade and investment conference, we're going to specifically be on trade and investment. I'd like to know, in your opinion, as a lead where in your organizations, what exactly would you say is the trade and investment rate out of 10 in Nigeria? Thank you very much for the question. As in, if you look at Nigeria, you want to rate us between 1 and 10. I would say based on potential, we're like 2 over 10, right? Okay. Um, and I think there's quite a bit that needs to be done, you know, to sort of elevate that from 2 to maybe 7, 8. And that's the importance of the trade framework and that sort of stimulate the ability of producers here to be able to export their goods, you know, to, to other countries. So I think if the right policies are put in place, this can potentially facilitate the movement of our rate from two um, to, to eight, you know, potentially. So if you were to list five of these things that are supposed to be put in place, what would you say they are the most important? Thank you very much for that question. So if you look at what are the most important things, I, I think that there are a couple of points to think about. One is in terms of trade rules, right, um, between Nigeria and every other country. Also, within a framework like Africa Container Free Trade, those trade rules need to be in a way that sort of foster private sector to be able to trade with the other countries, right? I think the second bit, which is for me, is also very fundamental, is infrastructure, right, which is essentially what is the supply chain of moving goods from Nigeria to other countries. We know we have problems with road. You know, we have problem with even, you know, the ports, ETC and all that. I think for me, that's an, a second important point. I think third important point is around incentives, right? What are the incentives that stimulate export? Are those incentives being implemented in the right way, you know, to producers that are, want to do export? I think over and above that, I think two important things that come from the firm's perspective, which is the producers, is their own ability to even adapt their goods, you know, to the needs that you have um, in, in other countries. And I think the last bit is really around the pricing, right? Um, how does your pricing in Nigeria affect, you know, the pricing of products in other countries? So for me, those are the factors that should be taken into consideration if you really want to stimulate export and trade between Nigeria and other African countries. From what you've said, Production is not necessarily a problem. Yeah, production is not necessarily a problem. Production at the right price may be the problem, mm -hmm. right? Which is essentially the point that the cost of doing business, you know, related what you call your comparative advantage in Nigeria may be a bit lower than some other country. So production in itself not a problem. It's really the cost of production, right? Um, which you can then tie by back to ease of doing business issues within um, Nigeria and all that. And obviously that goes back to infrastructure. Right, the right infrastructure in the place, right? Um, the cost of doing business is lower and relatively the pricing of your produce, you know, becomes cheaper, you know, for exports. Now, if you want to give an advice to an investor coming into Nigeria, what exactly would you tell them to do and not to do? So maybe twofold. It's working or understanding first the regulatory framework, but also identifying some of the opportunities from a business perspective and just leaning into what Chegwan mentioned. It's about ensuring that cost is at the lowest um, base so that you can stay competitive. And I guess the second thing is also around strategy and structure within those organizations. So there's the external constraints, but there's also the internal constraints because you want to make sure, for instance, you have the right supply chain routes to market is also right and then the combination of those two would make sense given nigeria's situation now foreign exchange definitely is a big issue to think about but the good thing is that the devaluation of the currency is also a useful policy that companies can leverage on why because when you compare the rates against the dollar the cost of doing things here comparative to the u.s or other developed economies, it's supposed to be cheaper. The more you devalue, the more it gets cheaper to do stuff here. So we have an advantage to that extent. But the areas where you probably might have issue is when you look at how you then push those markets into the market. So for instance, your freight, how are those priced? If they are priced in dollars, then there's a lot of pressure still on the currency and that shoots up the cost of your goods. 
So I think the one thing that we definitely need to accelerate is how we're doing trading across the continent. And the truth is, when you look at also intra-continent trades, in Europe, for instance, where it's about 60% or even more, the GDP in those economies are better for it. In Africa, where our intra-regional trade is only about 15%, you can see that we are significantly lower. This is why the AFCFTA becomes a very important tool for any business that's coming here to pretty much execute. But then they can't do that if the governments who have signed this agreement don't also implement. So I think that's the way to go. But then there's still some attractions and it's trying to actually get a balance. Whether or not government has done all they need to do, there might still be some advantages that you can lean into. For instance, the forex disparity. All right, thank you so much. Now in uh, one sentence, short sentences, Tell me what you think about Business Day, or more like a shout out to Business Day and this conference. Business Day is a thought leader. And I think Business Day is driving the wheels on subjects that matter. Um, so doing this on trade and also doing the one we anchored last year on family businesses was amazing. So well done, Business Day. I keep on reading you. <laughs>